Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm here at New York's World Maker Fair. I'm here with Ted Southern. You're one of the co-founders of Final Frontier Design. Now, we did a story with Ted on the site a couple months ago, but we wanted to tell your story because you actually have your gloves here. You and a partner make spacesuits and spacesuit designs privately. Can you tell me how that started? Because you had no history in this before. Right? That's right, yeah. I, uh, so I started as an artist. I got an MFA in sculpture. Uh, but I'm here with the NASA booth and the Centennial Challenges, which is really how we got started. NASA has this program, Citizen Inventor Prizes. One of their challenges was for astronaut gloves. I entered it as an artist, and I met my uh, partner now, who was then a competitor, Nikolai, who worked in the Russian space program for Zvezda, the Russian spacesuit provider, for many years. We were competitors the first challenge, and we decided to join as a team the second challenge. We outperformed NASA's current technology and won some money, uh, but then also a lot of support from NASA, and from there we started a business making not just the pressure garment gloves, but also space suits for the new private commercial space industry. Uh, you're a designer by trade, and Nikolai is an engineer, and he's, he's not here right now, but he's, very, he's a Russian dude, and he yeah. worked with the Russian Roscosmos, and how did that collaboration work? How, how does that work? I'm not sure. <laughs> some days it doesn't, some days it does. Um, we fight like a married couple, but I think a lot of small business owners do. Um, I think it is a nice marriage of science and art. You'd be surprised sometimes the, the roles reverse. I oftentimes am the one saying we have to follow the checklist, and Nick is the one who wants to move forward quickly and has crazy ideas, but um, you know, every day we make it work and uh, every day it gets a little bit better. So in terms of a checklist, there are a lot of re requirements that NASA has for these competitions. And when you guys are designing these gloves, what were the requirements and how did you guys even surpass their expectations? So the biggest part of the challenge was to reduce the required torque to bend the pressurized joint. And so NASA went through and measured every single finger joint and the wrist joints, flexion extension, add an abduction and measured exactly how much force and torque and turn that it took to bend those joints. And that was really what we designed around, was reducing torque. There are obviously a lot of other considerations with gloves. You want things to be able to cycle for a long time, and um, there were other, uh, other measurements that they took. Uh, one of the most dramatic ones was a burst test, so they inflated the glove until it exploded. Uh, and obviously you want that to happen many times over the standard operating pressure. And by winning that competition, what does that mean? Does that mean NASA is going to adopt some of those ideas? Not necessarily. I think it's a good story, though, that, you know, it could have just meant, great job, you know, here's your check, goodbye. Uh, but in fact, they've put a lot of effort into uh, building us up as a company. They invited us to Houston to show off our glove technology to engineers, and we have since done some contracting with them. Um, it's a long road to get something into space. Um, it's not a road at all, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a real challenge to advance your, what they call your TRL, your technical readiness level, to get to space worthiness. But, um, uh, I, I think it's a great story that NASA really has put the effort and encouragement into to bringing us along and, and trying to have some competition in what has historically been a very exclusive military industrial sort of industry. So. Yeah, you guys aren't the David Clark company, you guys are just two guys, right? Not to name any names, <laughs> but yeah. So, you guys are started with gloves and now are moving to full body suits. You guys are working on an IVA suit for inter intravehicular activity and also some EVA designs. What is the difference there in terms of the design process, in terms of the lessons you guys have to learn to design something like that? Uh, so there's a lot of crossover between IVA and EVA. We're focusing on IVA now because we see a commercial market for that with all the new companies coming online, Virgin and SpaceX being the most famous, but we're actually working with some high altitude balloon companies and some astronaut training centers who are interested in the, having these suits in house and understanding them. Um, and there is crossover between IVA and EVA. Both of them need a pressure garment and have a human inside that pressure garment. And there's some basic things that happen with heating, exothermic uh, body temperature regulation, and, and um, you know, anthropomorphics trying to overcome how body moves versus how the balloon that surrounds the body moves. So. 
And you guys behind us have an example of one of your IVA designs. Um, you come from the designer background, so textiles and fabrics and material science, that's something of interest to you? Yeah, absolutely. I would say that I am the materials guy in the team. Um, I have a little bit more knowledge of the American market and, and newer technologies of materials, and Nikolai has a lot more knowledge of uh, the flat patterning and restraint techniques that it takes to, um, to develop you know, movable pressurized joints. Um, you'd be surprised though that uh, there's very little design in an uh, aesthetic sense that goes into this. It's almost entirely functional, and we get that question a lot, like how much do you want this to look sexy, and how much are you just like, why is it orange, and things like that, and it's really, you know, that's a functional aspect of a suit, and um, I, you know, I imagine in the future that we'll have more aesthetic considerations, but for now it's like, form follows function, as it were. Function's very important when you're talking about something that's keeping someone alive in space or up in a balloon. So, when talking about the future, where might someone see a, this, a Final Frontier Design space suit, you know, in, in a commercial application? What's, where, who are you talking to and, and what's next? Uh, so we're excited to be working with our first real customer, Zero to Infinity, which is a high altitude balloon company out of Spain. They hope to fly humans next year, 2014, um, in what they call their mini balloon, um, up to like 30 kilometers, which is 90,000 feet or so. So they absolutely need a pressure garment as a redundant backup pressure layer at that altitude. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense for us to be working with high altitude balloon companies because adding a rocket into the equation just adds a whole lot of other complexities, g-forces and flame resistance and vibrations that you don't have in, uh, in a balloon. So it's a great first step for us, but we'd like to move on to rocket companies and uh, eventually you know, provide the EVA suits for Bigelow Aerospace or whoever else needs them in the future. That's so awesome. Thank you so much, Ted, for telling us your story, for being here at Maker Faire and letting kids actually try out your gloves. Yeah, Just two guys from Brooklyn. Well, one guy from Russia originally. Exactly. And We're growing. We have four people in our company now, plus some interns and uh, so. But yeah, just a couple guys. It's a great startup innovator story. That's the best thing about Maker Faire, finding people like Ted. And we'll have more from Maker Faire on Tested.com. I'm Norm. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome videos like this. And we'll see you next time. Bye.